in the equation of NGN design and the requirements which were presented for NGN, the role of operator, if not the most important one, is something that cannot be ignored as well. In this module, we should look at how the operators, which are the service providers, have a role in the NGN. We'll start with how the networks evolved over time, all eventually becoming the internet service providers. Then we'd look at the concept of liberation or liberalization as in today's world. And then we'd look at the drivers that we can finally extract out of the discussion. Let's start with every network that seemingly became an ISP over time. Initially, when internet was offered through different internet service providers, there was, an, there was an assumption that ISP is something that is, in reality, something quite different from existing networks. Because in those days, the telephone, the um, cable, and other kinds of services were also there. But when the internet service providers emerged, it was thought that the ISPs are something quite different. So the licensing of these ISPs were also different. Their billing mechanisms were different. But over time, it was realized that the existing networks were also utilizing eventually the same hardware, both at the access site as well as the broadband or the core side, for instance. Whether it was cable TV or it was the telecommunication network, both these were using the SDH and PDH transport network. Then the, on the access or the customer premises side, the dial-up modems or the lease lines were also being used. So over time, it was realized that if the ISPs, which were just using routers and switches, could provide internet access, by using the uh, multiplexing and the transportation and the access side equipment, so could the other networks. So finally, all the networks started providing internet connectivity, thereby eventually becoming the ISPs. Then over time, liberalization also took place. Liberalization means that every state owned service provider, for instance, we, we had the P PTC, Pakistan Telecommunication Corporation, that later became Pakistan Telecommunication Corporate Corporation Limited, Company Limited. And over time, we saw that there were acquisitions, sell-offs, and licensing, which were given to new players. So new operators emerged with new kinds of services. Now, this liberalization actually gave way to the concept of providing value-added services or something that is providing competitive edge over the existing nation or state-owned operators. In terms of the business or revenue model, traditionally, the telcos were making money on the voice circuits and on the short message service, that is SMS. But over time, as we are lately observing, the telco's main market has also become data in addition to the internet service providers. It means voice has now been relegated downwards. Similarly, for other service providers like cable network, the DSL, data is now the first and foremost service. Inherently, all these are based on IP. Why? Because all these service providers, providers have realized that using IP, they can provide services which are more scalable. It is, that is, they can adapt or give these services with lesser quality of service to more number of users. So it can be scaled up with existing infrastructure or more infrastructure could be beefed up in a modular manner. Then the infrastructure provides flexibility. It means depending upon the user requirements, which may be from being very loose, the best effort, to the gold or the diamond uh, kind of quality of service requirement. What it means is that the IP-based infrastructure provides us flexibility. Now, this is the kind of model that made the internet service providers, which is all the networks are now the internet service providers, to make money 
on the basis of every customer and every requirement of the customer that could be from being very loose to being very stringent. From this discussion, we conclude that eventually all these service providers or the operators are heavily dependent on the equipment that the vendors or the OEMs provide them with. Since the vendors are now getting wiser and they are investing on technologies which are more strategic in nature, they're all banking on the IP. Number one, IP is low cost. Switches and routers are at exceedingly low prices available. And then these, this infrastructure doesn't collapse overnight. It's quite rugged and stands long. So the change in the strategic orientation of the vendors is also determining the overall scope and the purview of the providers. Another beauty of the next generation networks services is that the operators can pick and choose and can take the liberty to implement NGNs partially. And it is very much natural to assume that they would like to do that because every telecom or every other service provider is interested in banking on its strengths and then moving or migrating to new services which are relatively lesser risk based. So it means that now we are seeing the operators that they are deploying NGN from their own perspective and as per their own pocket. 